and they're shooting them in the back of one federal soldier was Randolph Rosenberger, 65th Ohio. He was 37 years old, a German immigrant. I see his face right now. I know that knew the descendants. to Hood's headquarters, which is the Thompson home. The Thompson home. Absalom Thompson home. That's on your map. Bait rides to Hood's headquarters. That's what, you know, what's going on? He said, follow the commanding general on the field as he may have more information than I have. So, another thing, they had the roadblock, which wasn't Cheatham's orders anyway, uh, or at least uh, give them a lot of hell. And they pull back. So that's the front space is over with of Claiborne's attacking. Bradley, Bradley is wounded, by the way, here. So tomorrow it would be Conrad's brigade, not Bradley's brigade. Conrad will be leading up tomorrow. First phase is over with. So not on your map, but the second phase now is Brown's division, Claiborne's division, and Bates' division. Who's supposed to be on uh, Cheatham's Corps right? Who's going to be on Cheatham's Corps right? What's the corps left at the river? Creek. Stewart. Stewart's Stewart. Corps. Where's Stewart? He's not there. He's not on that right because he's still at the creek. Because, Hood, you know what he's worried about. I said five times there. And finally, Stewart starts about 7 p.m. I'm getting ahead of myself. Starts marching down this old settler's road. I don't think it's on your map. Uh, uh, the, uh, the old settler's road. Not on your map, but at the base of those, that ridge, and it gets lost, and then pulls back, and then starts going again. And while this is going on, now Stewart goes to Hood's headquarters. Now Bates been there, Stewart goes there, and now they're deployed in line of battle. Brown, Claiborne, and Bates division waiting on Stewart to get on their right, and now coming down this Columbia Pike. Bait fired on them, and into the night is Schofield's army from Columbia. Campfires were within 150 to 500 yards of the road. 
Federals can see them. Uh, some of them are saying, hello, Andersonville. Hello, Andersonville. Uh, some Federals with Scoville denied. Some Federals are getting close to the Confederate camp. Like the pipe of the cat. Others get close to hear what they call a funny accent. Exhaustion. How many miles that they marched just to get up here? Starting at 4 a.m. 17 miles was supposed to be about 13, 12. <coughs> bad maps. Bad maps. Finally, Stewart finally aligns on Cheatham's right, and Stewart forms his command. Not here. Like here's the road. Stewart forms his men like this, not like this. Hood felt he'd blocked the road. He formed it back like this, mm. and uh, then blocked the road. And uh, finally, Forrest is up there. I'll repeat this over there at the Thompson Place. Forrest comes up there, and, and all these generals are warning. And the legend says a private soldier came up there and said that the Yankees are coming down the pike. Hood was awakened three times with these generals coming. And Forrest is there uh, with this private soldier, supposedly, he says the Yankees are marching down the pike. And first of all, this is where it really goes to odd, different, whatever's going on, is that Forrest is there, and Forrest, uh, he said, General Forrest, can you block the road down there? And Forrest said, I will try in an emergency. I have four rounds of ammunition. When he left, he said, it's, everything's okay. Forrest said, block the road. He never said he could block the road. Some say that Forrest should have moved his men south and blocked. He never had orders to go down toward Columbia and, and, and scout down there. Remember, we had been fighting all day long, and he never had orders to go down there. He has been damn busy with this. Uh, so I feel that's not a valid point. I know some historians will say that. I don't believe that at all. And, um, and finally, Stewart's on the right, and Hood goes to sleep. And uh, he, now some people say he was on Laudanum or whatever. There's no proof of any of that. I think, once again, it's a more valid point of pain. Uh, there's a lot of he says, oh, I don't think there's that much pain. I said, hell, his leg was amputated four inches from the hip. Only four men left that top of the I know in combat veterans from World War II still have pain in that leg that's not there. My brother two years ago had his leg amputated here, and he's still in pain all the time from it and scratching it where it's not there. And he's in heart. I can feel it right now hurting and burning. It's not there. Now, don't tell me Hood won. Plus a physical therapist in Tennessee, one of the major ones. She studied Hood. Being in the South, you got to write yourself down your back, lower back things going on. I think pain is a valid point. And I don't blame him. Hell, and if he was taking a while, there's no proof of that. I don't blame him for that either. Take a lot of blood before. You know, give it to me, John. A lot of it. Yeah. But Hood Schofield said, I know why we escaped. I stayed in the saddle while I was in bed. Oh, that's a little snotty, but they have some of that. Uh, uh, so, oh, uh, why would next day, Hunter's raising hell. Why would you go on the road with Stuart there? Stuart was thinking, why wouldn't you go out there? He didn't say that. Why wouldn't you go out there? Now, I'm going to repeat that again over the times of place with these messages going on and whatever. And these generals go in there. But it was 
was only to set out and see a few skirmishers to see what's coming down the pipe. He said, that one in order, they obeyed it, they sent out some skirmishers. Now Johnson's division of SD Lee's Corps comes up, that's Brantley and Charles Mississippi Brigade, Days, Alabama, and Medico, South Carolina, Alabama Brigade. Mason told him at Nashville, and that's why he changed it, but he didn't say that. But Cheatham didn't get that order to block the road. Mason went to sleep, and Mason admitted that to Chaplain Quintard, which I believe Chaplain Quintard. And back again, lack of communicating, overconfidence, and exhaustion. They are exhausted. You can sleep standing up, walking, when you're that tired. Um, and they escape. And how and why it's been debated forever. Uh, and uh, back in the old days, they just say, Hood was drunk. That's easy to say. Hood's drunk. Put a band aid on a cannonball hole and let it go. Uh, uh, that's so easy because they didn't have access to all these sources. They didn't have access to, uh, but you got to go, it's meticulous, mind boggling. You got to go through everything Hood said. You cannot see the Columbia Pike at the Rutherford Creek. Now, Sam, you said, or Stephen Hood said, well, you can see it way back. He didn't say, in General Hood's book, he didn't say it was 10 miles down that um, uh, Davis Ford Road. He said at the Rutherford Creek is what Hood said, and that's physically impossible. That's a tiny thing, but he said Granberry's was at the front of Claiborne's division. No, it was Lowry's, not Granberry's. That's a tiny thing, but whatever. Um, and uh, only way you can see the hill, the road, is here, on this hill. And Hood was never up here, never up here whatsoever. And um, and they escaped. And Hood was as rapid as a rattlesnake on the third, striking out at everyone. And we're going to go to where a, 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 a and we're talking about at, at the Thompson place where Hood slept. And then we're going to go to Rip a Villa. Something to the effect, I'm not, I'll, you know, I want to hear, obviously, but something lightly wooded is what they said, lightly wooded. Some people still try to say the whole thing lightly wooded.